Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick here, uh, dropping in on you. Uh, it's been one of those days. Uh, been putting in work since about four this morning. Uh, it's a lot going on. Like I told you, I'm finishing the year strong, regardless of the opposition and everything that's happening. And I encourage you to do the same thing. It's not going to be easy, but you got to put in the work. Now, I want to talk to you about something that you guys know I'm passionate about. And I've been talking about it, lecturing on it, writing, doing videos, uh, uh, theses, and everything else under the sun when it comes to the future of our children. And it is imperative. It is imperative that we gain a lucid understanding of the importance of protecting our children. We're doing a very poor job of it right now. And when I say that, I mean that in so many different ways that I'm not going to be able to cover it all uh, in this short video. Um, I work in a number of different areas uh, where I assist parents uh, with different elements and components of parenting and protecting their children, advocating for their children, uh, with doctors advocating with, for their children uh, in their education system, uh, properly and holistically uh, developing their child's self-image. That is immensely important, and that's one of the areas we're failing in, is as a child develops, I mean from early on, the moment that they can sense and detect how you move and how you handle them long before they can speak they've started to develop their self-concept they are aware they exist they are aware that they're here and they have an interaction with you how you interact with them is going to have a major role in how their self-image develops their self-concept how they see themselves you're labeling them with your words uh, how you refer to them what you say about them uh, the brain has this unbelievable uh, uh, unimaginable ability to do associate, uh, associative arithmetic far beyond the speed of any processor on any computer can possibly do. And what I mean by uh, associative arithmetic, I mean they can take one word and see it applied somewhere else or see it associated with something else and immediately categorize that in the brain and make sense. So for instance, um, you sit up and you tell your 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 your, your uh, child that um, you know you're ridiculously some some word that's not as negative. I, I don't know why something can't come to me. I, what I don't want to do is I work with so many people. I don't want to use examples of real life situations and and, and that people feel like I'm I'm, I'm uh, outing them because I'm not, I'm, I'm there for them and I'm feeling them. What I'm trying to do is get you to understand this associative process. Well, what, what we call parents are primary label givers. Why? Because they're spending the most time around the child in the most developmental uh, days, weeks, months, and years. And what they say, what they do, how they behave with the child is going to have a massive impact. Well, when you talk to a child, you can say one thing to them. If they hear that word or that phrase somewhere else and they see it applied to something and, uh, for, for instance, you, 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 you're joking with your kid and, you know, your, your four-year-old and you, 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 you say you're a brute because he's up there roughing it with his, with his dad, roughhousing with his dad, which all boys uh, do. And he's rough eyes when they say, you're such a brute. No big deal. You, you, you're you just saying it like you're telling him he's tough, right? But now he goes out somewhere or he watches a TV show and he sees the word brute applied to thuggish behavior, criminal behavior. He associates that. And he starts to question in his mind at a subconscious level, even though he may not be able to verbalize it. How does he fit into that role? Because mom says I'm a brute. And eventually, luckily, that's not something you would probably say to him enough times to where it would take hold, but it can still be a problem in an associative way. 
Same thing with any other thing. You got to be careful what you say to your kids, what you allow others to say to your kids. That's just one small area. Another area we're not protecting our kids is in allowing them to be reared by devices. These devices are designed and propagated with uh, information and stimuli that do not serve the interests of your child well. Very little on those tablets, very little on those phones are designed for the empowerment of your child, for the healthy establishment of self-worth, self-esteem, self-confidence, and a healthy self-image. Very little of it. Everything is based on a social norm that doesn't normally apply to them. Uh, you know, from from the idea of what constitutes beauty, from the idea of what constitutes class, from the idea of what constitutes success. All of that is being propagated. That's why you've got so many darn young girls running around uh, taking selfies at a, hundred, at a rate of 100 a minute. Uh, posting them on Instagram because they've been told that if you look like this and you move like this, you can become an Instagram influencer. Or, or the term that I just love, and I'm being extremely facetious uh, right now, but uh, is Instagram model. And my whole thing is, I think black women are beautiful. I, I don't care what shape, form, size, or whatever you come in, I think you're the most unique and beautiful creatures on the planet. I love black women. So, but what I'm saying is, Taking a picture and posting it in a place does not qualify you as a model in the sense of a profession. You lose yourself in the idea that you have a profession that cannot support you, that does not have any depth. So, the, so you don't develop yourself. I mean, even professional models, and I'm not just talking about runway models or fashion models. I'm talking about professional models. You got people who model hands. Well. They could probably model their hands for a long time because there's a commercial for every freaking hand in the book from the young, beautiful hand to the old, wrinkled hand. There is enough for that. But when you talk about certain things with, 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 with models in the major mainstream, those careers are normally short-lived if you don't have any depth, if you don't develop yourself, if you don't have an aura of creativity. The, what, where the juice at, for instance, let's say in fashion. Yeah, fashion models can make a good living, especially if you uh, become high, high in demand. Uh, if you develop a name, if your face starts to pop up you, and, and, and something catches on by you, you can become extremely rich being a model. But you know who has the longevity in the industry? The designers, the create, the, those who can take something in their mind and bring it to fruition. They will never be broke. And that's what we don't do. We don't nurture the creativity. We don't nurture the individuality of our children. We are constantly comparing them to something else. We're constantly pushing them down an avenue uh, that makes other people comfortable. I see it uh, not only in schools. I see it um, with, man, go out to any restaurant. Everybody at the table is on the phone. There's no community. There's no communication. That's a lack of developing social skills. Everybody knows how to scroll their phone. My three-year-old grandson comes in and will, he can't get my phone. Nobody is allowed to touch my phone but my wife. Uh, I don't do that. Let me see your phone stuff with the kids. Kids have everybody. Finally, my wife finally stopped allowing that crap. But uh, -uh nobody can. So my grandson can't have my phone. So he grabs his Nana's phone or his dad's phone or whatever. And, and he, he got it and he can go to anywhere, open it up. If it's closed, he knows how to get into it. And he, he, he'll, he'll, he'll go, you know, go find what he wants, open it up, change, go into apps, all this kind of stuff. Tell you, Hey, your phone's ringing. Well, you know, uh, and I mean, all of this at three years old, but how much of that, if it's not properly managed? Now you can actually take that if it's something he's really passionate about and excited about and guide him in it to where he becomes the person that invents the next this or that, or the person who fixes all of this and that or whatever. But just the idea of the content on there, it's not the device, it's the content. The device is an instrument. The content is the weapon. And you've got to understand that these people are unbelievably uh, I don't even know a word for it but they have a, a I'm sorry I'm coming back into the office I had to go help 
Marion do something at her office. So I'm back at mine, uh, still not finished. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is we're responsible for educating our children. We're responsible for holistically empowering them and preparing them. That's what education is. Education is more than the attainment of academic skills, so much more. And I'm not saying uh, that you marginalize or mitigate the impact of having good academic skills because they can play a role in a bunch of things. But at the same time, there's so much more to education beginning with the identity. Child has to have an identity. A child has to understand who they are. That comes from the parent. And don't get me wrong. Don't 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 think I'm out here standing on my high high horse uh, and, and talking down to anyone. I'm not. What I'm saying is, I understand that in many instances, uh, even if there are both parents in the home, both parents are having to work, and that means that a child is probably going to have to go to school or have some type of alternative uh, situation. Not everybody is in a position to homeschool. Not everybody is ready for homeschooling. Trust me, been there, done that. You definitely have to be committed, but I can tell you the reward is immeasurable. Uh, and it doesn't have to be for a indefinite period of time. Uh, it can be uh, uh, a socialization uh, tool to where you get your children totally socialized and then you integrate them into a public school system at a time you feel that what you have put into them is secured and protected and strong enough to withstand what they're going to go against and then every day you debrief them uh that's what we do wait what you do at school what you talk about at school what do you think about this well they said this no let's sit down and talk about that so did you research it did you read it what do you think about what they said and we have these discussions in other words you're not going to be in a in a cocoon your entire life. You're going to have to go out into a world where they're going to try to feed you a bunch of BS about who you are, feed you a bunch of BS about what you're worth. They'll try to sell you on the fact that you're not worth a lot. And so we're just going to pay you this because we got this and we got that. You, and you've got to know who you are. You got to know your value. You got to know where you fit in. You got to have confidence. But that comes in the beginning. That comes at a time when you should be very careful about who you have around your kids, what they say to your kids, how they treat your kids, because all of that is being processed into that mind, absorbed, categorized, and put into uh, these pockets of, of, of how they process things. So when something pops up, it goes to that category and it fans through and says, what does my, uh, my environment and my background, and it's a short background at that time, but what does it say about this? And if it says, you know, mom says I'm dumb, then I probably shouldn't even be worried about whether I'm gonna pass this test or not. I'm dumb. If I'm dumb, if the moment that a kid accepts the fact that he's not smart, because see, not smart equals dumb. That's a good, another good example. You tell him you're not really that smart. Don't worry about it. Well, he eventually figures out that not smart means I'm dumb. Then that it's an associated process. He gets it. And now all of a sudden, what happens is in the self-conscious, the self, I mean, the self-concept and self-image is so powerful that when you identify with something, your behavior will match it. That's how you maintain your sanity is your behavior has to match your self-image, has to match how you see yourself in the world. You can't say I'm this and consistently do that and not start to experience a lot of volatility in how you move and operate and process mentally. So what happens is if you convince a kid that he's stupid, you'll see it in their behavior. And it doesn't mean they're stupid. It means they bought into the lie that they were stupid. They bought into the lie that they couldn't learn. They bought into the lie that they had ADHD. They bought into the lie that they were oppositionally defiant. And I'm not saying that ADHD doesn't exist and oppositional defiance doesn't exist. I'm saying that the vast majority of young black males and young Latino males that are uh, diagnosed with it don't have it. I'm saying that it's a lot more uh, a lot more rare than what you would be led to believe because it's an easy fix of getting little black boys to sit down and be still. Why? Because as early as five years old, they're pumping them full of psychotropic drugs like Ritalin, Vivas, Concerta, um, Adderall uh, to keep them docile and seated when that's not how young uh, five, six, seven, eight year olds operate, move or learn. They learn through movement and engagement, touch and examination. They weren't designed to be still at that age. Name me one animal that in their early developmental, they're not even close to puberty at five, six, seven, and eight. Tell me one species that's sitting around and behaving like an adult, doing what adults do 
at that age that's demanding them to fit into your comfort zone so that you can be comfortable but it's not how they learn it's not you can't discover a child's genius without allowing them to move and watching them that's how you discover what they're good at what they're passionate about what they like to do watch them observe them how do they move what do they talk about what do they gravitate to when they play what they what do they pretend to be when their imagination is going you need to be tr actually deep into all of that when your child is going through that state you should know hey he absolutely loves this he absolutely did i talked to a parent today and that parent was on it that parent knew what their child liked how their child liked to learn that is what needs to be done that is what needs to be done look i'm going to get off of here because i got to get back in and make some things happen uh before i bounce out of here and again we've got work to do and i'm looking for people who really want to work uh there's a lot of work to do i can't do it by myself i'm literally swamped with work i mean just in emails about missing kids i'm swamped just in can you sit down with my child i'm swamped just in can you evaluate this situation i'm swamped just in could you sit down with me and my spouse that's just the community stuff i run companies i literally i work for a living okay all of this stuff is here and it has to be done you can't I mean, if a person wants to change. Now, there's some people out there that are just not going to change. We're not even talking about them. We're talking about the ones who want to change, ones who want to do better, ones who want better for their kids. We've got to give them something they can turn to. We can't leave them out there hopeless and tell them to figure it out. Uh, we, we've we tried that, and it, 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 it has cost us dearly, cost us in time, cost us in position, and we've lost ground. It's, it's We've lost ground. It's time for us to really step up and start doing things better. And so I'm challenging everybody to do that. Uh, on that note, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Don't forget, if you believe in the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project, I'm really serious about it. If you believe in the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project, go to the description box of this video. Click on the link to support and donate. Uh, if you don't like going and donating on websites and you've got Cash App, the Cash App handle is also in the same place. This is how we're going to have to do this thing. I will do more than carry my load. I've done it for 20 plus years with this organization. I've done that and I'm, I will continue to do it, but I need you guys to help me. On that note, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, maybe I'll talk to you on the way home if it's still light. Uh, I try not to do uh, too many videos at home, even when I'm in the office, because it's all kind of stuff going on. They're talking about family and community. You know, I'm like they seem like more coming in than going out. But anyway, that's that. I'm out. You guys have a great day.